Okay. It is a set of inputs, which are known as your domain, which we will go over in a minute. Set of inputs, known as a domain, and a rule assigning each input to exactly one output. Oops. What's that called? What's your output called? If your input is the rank domain, oh, I just gave it away. Darn it! <laughs> just so excited. Range. A set of inputs, domain, and a rule assigning each input to exactly one output. Darn it, I didn't talk about Judah yet either and how your summers were. We've had so much going. I'll stop it after here and I'll give you all the Judah details. Um, all right, so let's make sure we know what a function is. It, they could give you a table of values. I don't know, negative 5, 1, 0, 5, 0, negative 6, 7. They could give it to you as a graph. They could give it to you as an equation. x squared plus y squared equals 9. And you need to know if it's a function or not a function. Is this a function, yes or no? Tell me why. It has okay. more than one output for each input? No. Each input has to have exactly one output. What does that mean? Your, y, your Y's can repeat, but your X's can't. Are my X's repeating? No, this is a function. Yay! I know, it's been a while. Your X's don't repeat. Your X's cannot repeat. So if they give you a table of values, your X's can't repeat. What do you do if you look at a graph? Do you remember for it to determine a function? Vertical line, Vertical line test, go David. I know. <laughs> if you do a vertical line test on it, it hits it twice. Is that okay? No, it can only hit it once. Because again, if it hits it twice, that means this X right here, let's say it's five, five has been assigned two different outputs. 5 has been assigned a 2, and then 5 has been assigned a negative 2 or whatever. So that is not a function. Uh, actually, let's say fails vertical line test. All right, and then it's up to you how you determine this one. You should know this from last year when we did conic sections. No. <laughs> it is a circle. So in your head right now, if you did a vertical line test on a circle, oh, yeah. it would fail it, correct? All right, another way to do that, let's just pretend I gave you another crazy function. You're like, well, how do I know if, what it's going to be? If you try to solve it for y, so if I do, you know, y squared equals 9 minus x squared, take a square root. By the way, what happens when you take a square root? What do you always have in front of that radical? Plus well, you're so smart. I just love you so much. I missed you so much. Oh, my gosh. Okay, what does that plus or minus do? That assigns two y's to that one x. Do you see what I'm saying? So I could plug an x in, so now I've assigned two y's. So then would that be a function? No. Okay, but yes, you could have thought, well, Mrs. said it's a circle. I, duh. I was like, good job, but either way. But that's assigning two y values. All right, can you handle that? Yeah. Of course you can. You're like, yeah, I totally got this. All right, then we're going to evaluate functions, which is literally your favorite thing. Evaluate, and I'm going to give you f of x equals 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Let me pull this up. Can you all see this in the back, by the way, Liam? Are you good? Back row people, you're good? Liza, are you good? Because you were like, I'm against the back row. It's Skylar's fault. She put you back there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not really, but. Yeah. All right, so they're going to give you this. Tommy, this is what your sister gave to me yesterday that her roommate couldn't do, and I was mad at Maggie for not knowing how to do that. Yeah. FYI. Loser. Yeah. Don't worry, Tommy. You'll be helping her roommate soon. Um, so what do I do? 
plug it in. Plug it in. Yep. Again, Amy's not here to sing that. <laughs> I'm going to be singing that to the next group. Um, and then, you know, this is obviously your math. You should know how to do it, which this is the worst part of for me. I can do calculus, but I cannot do computation, which is fun. Four times three is what? 12. 12 minus four is a seven. Is that right? Oops. Square root of two, same thing. You know, you really just got to be careful. I chose that square root of two because what happens when you square a square root? So what would this be? Six. Six. And then what do you do when you do two times square root? How do you write that? Two root two. Root two. It's not root four. It's two root two. Okay. So you just leave it like that. And then minus one. So now how do I clean that up? Correct. You, you leave the radical by itself. This is called exact form. Don't give me a decimal unless it asks for a decimal. We're mathematicians now. We leave things in exact form. Okay. I know you're shocked. All right. This is very important. This A plus H, you're going to see that come very soon. I think chapter two, it's called a difference quotient, which we didn't get to last year. Yay for us. Yay for COVID. Um, but again, you're just taking this entire thing and plugging it everywhere you see an X. So I'm going to put A plus H squared plus two times A plus H minus one. And you're going to be very careful and you're going to foil it out and simplify it out. You have to. And you're like, why? Because we're going to get to something called a difference quotient. There's always reasons. Um, you should know how to foil something that's being squared very, very quickly. Don't be like, oh, it's a squared plus h squared. If you write that, I don't know why you're in this class. Sorry. Okay. This is a foil. This is a trinomial. Binomials that are squared become trinomials. If you didn't know, binomials, except if they have, you know, all of them. Take it back. All right. So this is a squared plus 2ah plus h squared. Then I'm going to multiply by 3. So that's 3a squared plus 6ah plus 3h squared. And then you just do the rest, plus 2a plus 2h, and then minus 1. Can I combine anything? No, right? You have no, we're about to head into that, and that's going to be a fun one. OK, can you handle that? Of course you can. I'll pause that for a minute. Next one, domain and range, and then we got one more thing left. Uh, zeros and intercepts. So this isn't too bad. And then I'm done. And then the rest of the time is yours, which will be us going to an, an assembly. Yay. <laughs> so fun. Find domain and range. Y'all, you got to put a star around this and you need to know how to do this. Okay. We worked a lot of this last year in pre-calc. You just have to know you got to put it in your graphing calculator. You've got to look at it. But honestly, you really shouldn't have to put it in your graphing calculator. You should know what these look like. If you don't remember and you're like, it's been a summer, Miss Aceta, I got you. I understand. But we're going to have to come back to understanding how to do this. And I will put it on the first quiz. I love these things. Nine X plus one. Okay. We're going to find the domain and the range for all of these. I would, I would suggest you do it what's called analytically, which is how we're about to do it analytically is using algebra as opposed to graphically because if you look at the graph your calculator will tend to like for this one like do you remember what square roots look like by the way what does square root function look like right shoots off okay that if you rem if you remember your calculator will like leave this empty space and that's not true it, there, it's actually hitting the x-axis there's a point where it's going to hit so that's why i'm saying you can use your graphing calculator to look just to double check but you need to like use to also use analytical skills which is algebraic skills okay so here we're going to look at the algebraic skills of it all so to find the domain the domain is is really easy what what can't the domain is what are all the x's that are allowed to what am i allowed to plug in for x in here well what can't you plug into a square root what can a square root not be underneath what will your calculator say error Negative. negatives right your calculator will be like error if you take square root of negative four right unless you have it on the complex number one, but uh, pretend it's not on that one. So when is this going to be negative? That's what you, you're like, well, I don't want it to be less than zero. I do not want this to be negative. Can't 
be negative. So under a square root, I should say. Under a square root or under a fourth root. Now wait, can you be negative under a cube root? You could, right? Right? Okay. So just keep that in the back of your head. All right. So to find the domain of a square root, this 3x minus 2 has to be greater than, can it equal 0? Can you take the square root of 0? What's the square root of 0? Zero? 0. Yeah, you can. So it can equal it. Okay? So, and then just solve. 3x is greater than or equal to 2. x is greater than or equal to 2 thirds. That is your domain written in x what's called bar notation, we could write it in, but I want you to start writing it in interval notation. Do you remember interval notation? Okay, let me kind of go over this real quick with you because I that's the one bad thing about this book. It doesn't go over interval notation. My old book did. So what is the lowest x value that you can be according to this right here? Two thirds, right? Can I equal two thirds? Okay, so if I can equal two thirds, I would go two thirds bracket. What is the highest x value that I could be according to this? Well, x can be greater than 2 thirds, so infinity. infinity, comma, infinity. Infinity always gets a parenthesis. Is this coming back to you, kind of? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so there's your domain. How do we do the range? Um, the range for this one, I would probably just go with, you know, the graph of it. I, so my value for x can be greater than two-thirds, so it's about here. And then we all know it's going to shoot that way. Would you not agree that it's going to continue creepily creeping up and up and up and up and up and up? Okay, so my range is all my y values. What are my y values? Well, if you can see that there's nothing below what y number? Zero. zero. So all my y's have to be greater than or equal to zero. So y has to be greater than or equal to zero. How do I write that? Bracket, zero, comma, there you go. Okay, that's one of our hardest ones. Let's see about this one. Actually, no, I take it back. This one's the harder one. <laughs> we have totally 15 minutes left to do another whole section. And this is only part A, by the way. That's how fast this book goes. I can't wait. Um, all right, let's go to this one now. Domain and range of this rational number. So what do we know about rational? What do we know about fractions? What are they not allowed to be in the denominator? Zero. Zero. So that's your domain. Again, domain is what your x's are allowed to be. My x's can be anything but, my, but zero in the denominator. So 3x minus 2 cannot be zero. It can be everything else, but it cannot be zero. So then what does that mean x cannot be? Two thirds. So how do we write that in interval notation for domain? Well, x could be anything but two thirds. Could it be negative 100? Yeah. Could it be negative a million? Yeah. So it could be negative infinity all the way up to where? Two thirds with a parenthesis, not with a bracket. Are you all kind of remembering this kind of? I don't know. United with, and what would I do after that? Two thirds to infinity. Two thirds to infinity. Good job. Okay, there's your domain. Is that coming back? A little bit? All right. Um, range. So I would suggest probably looking at this. There's a way the book does it where. Um, and I was trying to understand it because I never was taught this, but you switch the X and Y and you solve for the Y. But that won't always work with certain ones, so I'm not going to show that to you. I would probably rather you graph this. And if you don't remember what this looks like, this is a rational function. It's going to be like a hook and a hook kind of thing. Um, but your range would then be from negative infinity to zero. I was forgetting being recorded. It's so wrong now. <laughs> Zero to infinity. Okay. So there's that one. All right. And one more. Cube root of 9x plus 1. We just kind of already alluded to this. You can be negative if you are a cube root or a fifth root or a seventh root, anything like that. You're allowed to be negative. You're also allowed to be positive. So, hey, guess what your domain is? All, all reals. So how do you write all reals as um, interval notation? 
negative infinity to infinity, okay? What does your range look like? Again, I would say for range, I'm very particular about range. I kind of always go back to the graph of it. So if you don't know what this graph looks like, you should know what the cube root one is. I think Ms. Davis taught it to you. It's kind of like this. It's like the disco, but flip sideways, okay? Because disco is X cubed. That's what she calls X cubed. Let me straighten that out for you all. <laughs> that's what she calls X cubed. Um, that even looks terrible, by the way. Oh my gosh. That, it looks like it's flattening out here, but if you kept expanding it, like z expanding and expanding it, remember these are still curving. I know it doesn't seem that way. It looks like, but isn't there asymptotes there? No, it will keep curving. So the range for that one would be negative infinity to infinity. It will actually get much more wider the, the further you expand it out. So I think that's the hardest thing to understand. And I remember being like you guys and not understanding. All right. Last and not least, I know this is so long. Can you imagine me doing two lessons like this every day? I know you can't. Poor people. Um, find well, actually, before I write that, um, do you know how to find x x and y intercepts? How do you find an x intercept? Let's start there, algebraically, not Plug graphically. In solve for y. Plug in zero. Plug in zero. You get a mint after you hand sanitize. Hand sanitize, sir. Hand sanitize. Brian, I can't believe you didn't know how to do that. Okay. Um, to find an x-intercept, this may seem weird, you set y equal to zero. To find an x, you set y equal to zero? Yes, because that would be the x number that I'm looking for. Okay. And so you would, uh, you would have a number comma x. That would be your, I mean, a number comma zero. That would be your x-intercept. To find a y-intercept, you would do set the, set the, eh, oh, you're so smart. You're just as smart as me and all the ones. Zero comma a number. You know, that's your y-intercept. It has a zero five, zero negative five. Okay, so this is the last thing we're going to do. Two of these and we're going to be done. And then I think I have shown you all the beginning part of it. Yeah, where's my thing? All right, so find x and y's intercepts. Find x and y intercepts and graph. I'm thinking you should know how to do this one. Again, it's a square root. Do you remember the shift stuff? We're going to get to that, but do you remember how to do that? What does that plus one on the outside do? What does it move? Uh, what does the plus three do? Left. Three, opposite the parent. Okay, so you probably already could tell what this looks like. It's going to be left three, up one. And then you kind of go, whoop, shoot it out. Okay, so there's your sketch. You just did your sketch. You can look in your calculator for it if you want. It's fine. Um, but you could even see right now, does this have, what does this not have? What kind of intercept? Does it have an X or does it have a Y? Does it have both? It doesn't have. AX. An x-intercept, does it? It's been shifted up. So algebraically, we can do this by, if we wanted to find that x-intercept, we would set y equal to 0, and we would get 0 equals, let's say, x-intercept. Just to show you algebraically, because I always want you to see it. x plus 3 plus 1, you subtract the 1 over, and right there is where your problem should stop. Most students will then go, oh, I'll just square both sides. Oh, and it becomes positive. No, no, no. Can a square root, no matter what a square root is, ever equal a negative number? No, no. So that right there is where you stop. No solution. Okay. So there is no, uh, not an x-intercept. Okay. For the y-intercept, you set the x equal to zero. So you would say y equals square root of 0 plus 3 plus 1. And that'll actually get you a number. That'll be root 3 plus 1, which I actually might get the, I might find out what the value for that is. Let me see if I have it. I don't. I left it as root 3 plus 1. Nice. Good job, math lady. What is root 3? Like 1 point something? Is she letting them go already? I can't let you go yet. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Last one. X-intercept, Y-intercept. Do you remember what the absolute value looks like? A V. A V. Math num abs. Do you know what that plus 5 means that V is going? 
Lap five, one, two, three, four, five. Do you remember what the four does to it at all? Yeah. So it's kind of like, neat. So there's your graph, but you do the same exact thing. For x-intercept, you set the y equal to zero. So f of x becomes zero equals four times x plus five times the absolute value of x plus five. You can divide by four, because that's not going to do anything. Do you remember how to solve absolute value equations? You actually have to make two of them, yeah. You have to make one, the, like let's say this was a two, you'd have to make, but we're, we're dealing with zero, so can we change the sign of it? No. So really your only answer is gonna be negative five. Can't you see that right here though, right? So your x-intercept is negative five, zero. All right, y-intercept, you see x equal to zero, so four, y equals four times zero plus five. Uh, what's the absolute value of five? Five. What's five times four? So 20, zero comma 20. And that you'll, you'll see that would, that would go off in your calculator. All right, so homework is listed. It's one, I'm gonna write it down real quick though. It's 1.1 is your section, number five to 27 odd. Now listen. These are on Slater. They are. I can't stop you. And I don't mind you looking at, I honestly don't mind you looking at Slater. Like if some of these are like, what the heck? I, I don't understand. Let me, let me check and see how it came out. That's fine with me. But if you're completely using it to cheat, not fine with me. And I will find you out come the quiz. It's just that easy. Okay. It really is. All right, y'all. Get your mask on and... Uh,